hello friends today in this tutorial i will be showing you a, a public chatting application we will be building inside node.js express and socket.io so this will be the application guys uh, public chat room so basically it's a chatting ap application in socket.io and we will be using the database uh, which is mongodb here and whenever you launch your application whenever you send a message this message will be stored inside our mongodb database so this is the application guys this is the demo here that you're seeing right here on the screen so basically whenever you are let me delete it from my local storage so your username guys which will be stored inside local storage you will see that this username is stored right here john and let me delete this clear out this storage so now if you reload this application a alert box will be shown to you that uh, please choose your username so there will be this uh, dialog box which will be there so here you need to enter the username so you need to enter the username let's suppose i pick the username as kane and click on enter chat now you will see that kane has joined the chat and similarly guys if i open this tab in a different window because i have already logged in so i will not be asked this question once again so this will be again kane has joined the chat you will see this notification will be here so basically you can uh, uh, let's suppose you can uh, create open this once again localhost 3000 from a different browser so you can see i am opening it in a different browser window it is already logged in with a different user here you will see that so once again i need to clear out from the local storage let me clear out and now guys this is clearly two different persons which are using this app here so so what will happen right here just see uh, if I reload once again it will say enter your username and then we will simply say smith and click on enter chat and now this notification message will be sent to this client also that smith has joined the chat and you can see that now if I send any sort of message guy hi so it will be reflected back in both the windows the smith has sent a message here and if I say hi smith so Kane will be there you can see that Kane has sent this message so you can see guys we are highlighting this message in both the screens so this uh, you can just uh, join multiple clients together this is a public chat room so multiple people can chat at one time this is the power of socket.io guys and the nice thing is that you can also have images support as well you can select an image file and as soon as you basically click on send this image file will be reflected back in both the windows you will see that and the nice thing is that if you can see that if I choose this file click on send so now you can see that Smith has sent this message so we have this image sending support guys so this makes it very intuitive this public chat room people can chat with one other and also send images as well so we will be building the socket.io project guys from scratch in this video and if you refresh this database guys you will see basically all the messages will be stored inside this collection this is a database which is automatically gets created and all these messages will be stored right here guys you will see that four messages are there and each message have three properties the id the author which is the username and the content you can see we have this image which is stored as a base64 code here which is showing right here so if you open this image you will see this is a base64 code here so you can view this image like this so in this way guys we are storing these images using socket.io so this is all real time happening between two clients of a server so we will be trying to build this chatting app guys from scratch so if you are interested you can basically uh, subscribe the channel hit the like button and if you want the full source code guys of this application the link is given in the description of this live stream so after you purchase the full source code guys you will see this directory structure which is public folder and this index.js so here you will get your all javascript code and the 
uh, HTML code right here. So now let's get started by building this application. So what we will do guys, uh, I will make uh, a new directory here. So I will simply say go into my D directory and basically I will here make a new directory which is socket chat. I will cd into this and open this inside the new Visual Studio Code window. So here guys we will basically initialize the Node.js project npm init-y so this will create the package.json file. Now we need to install mongoose library guys express. We also need to install malter and then we also need to install I think the last package is uh, let me check. Uh, socket.io so these are the four dependencies guys mongoose is able to connect to the mongodb database express will be the web server malter will be used to basically upload images and socket.io is our real-time chat server so just install these four things and now after this just create index.js so right here guys we will basically first of all create a basic express application so what we will say we will import the express package we will say here express and then we will make a new express app guys like this and also for this we will need to include the http module which is a built-in server so we will create a server here and pass the app reference and here we will create io variable input output so here we need to require the socket.io module and here we will pass this HTTP reference like this. So in this way guys you can create the basic socket.io. This is the basic template by which you can do that. And now we can basically load a simple template. So whenever you open the page, home page, we will load this template here which will be, we will simply say here, we will load this template which will be stored inside index.html. And then guys we will simply start this HTTP server we will basically say it will be listening on the server which is 5000 and here we will simply say app is listening on port 5000. So right here guys if I need to start this application I will say node more index.js so this will automatically restart the application whenever we make changes so just create this file index.html sorry we need to make it in a public folder so just make this public folder as a static folder so now to do this process it's very simple we will simply say here a simple middleware line app.use express.static public that's all so now if you basically do that just make a simple template here uh, let's suppose public chat room so this will be in the center position so we will say that text align center so right here guys if you reload this application if i change this port number 5000 you will see that public chat room and uh, the nice thing is that about socket.io guys we haven't used this yet but you can listen for various events out there so whenever we are doing this input output this basically contains a event function which is on so here you can listen for the connection event so whenever the socket is connected guys this reference will be there we can console log the information about the socket here so what it will do guys if you reload the application inside the console here if you refresh Uh, let me see what is the problem here just wait input output on connection uh, just wait guys I am just seeing what is the problem here Let me just uh, just stop the server and once again say here localhost 5000. Okay guys, the inf this is happening because uh, uh, we haven't included the 
client library guys yet so inside your index.html right here uh, you need to include our CDN for this which is very much there so right inside the body just make a script tag and right here just write slash socket.io slash socket.io.js this is basically you need to write guys and after this inside the javascript here just inside the script we will say const socket and we will say input output that's all so here we are initializing the socket.io library at the client side so after this guys we will able to see this message if I reload this application so now you can see all this information will be captured guys about the socket that is connected right here and uh, basically now we can simply instead of console logging the socket we can say that a new client is connected a new client connected so client is nothing but a browser window guys so basically if you open this application in a new window this will be the second client so obviously this will be the uh, different person which is from different part of world which is connecting to your application so this console login message will be there you will see a new client connected right here in the console so now we have successfully connected our socket.io library guys now we do need to basically install our mongodb database so right here let me delete this database click on drop so here we are having this mongodb compass community edition especially for windows and guys you need to basically first of all connect this and simply click on connect so now we just don't need to do anything here and right here inside the code here we do need to write some code for the schema and also for connecting to this database so we will simply say mongoose mongoose we need to include this module right here at the top and we do need to basically right here uh, just provide the mongodb uri right here just create a variable which is mongodb underscore uri and here guys we will say process.env if if it is not available in that case we will say that mongodb and basically it will run on localhost slash so here you need to give the database name guys let's suppose i give here socket app this will be the database name that you give right here this is your url if you're running it locally your database right here so after this guys mongoose library contains this method which is connect method which actually connect to the database right here you need to provide the mongodb uri and then guys you need to pass these two options which is uh, use new url parser to true and use unified topology to true and basically guys it contains the call uh, this promise we can handle this using dot then and then we can simply say that mongodb connected and if any sort of error take place we can also say console log error so if you now refresh your application hopefully guys this database will be connected if you see So you will see mongodb connected so we are successfully connected to this database guys so now we do need to basically define a schema guys so right here just you define the schema and this will be message schema schema refers to basically guys whatever information that you need to store inside the database so mongoose contains this method which is schema and here you need to provide an object which contains three properties first is the author this will be the username guys and the content refers to the message this will be also of type string and the image image will also be of type string that's all so we will be storing the image as a base64 string so we have these three properties out there username message and the actual image so we have this schema and now we can create a collection out of it we can say message mongoose.model and here we can define the 
collection name which is message and we will provide the schema right here message schema that's all so that's all that you need to do guys so now whenever we inside our index.html we do need to write our html code right here and for the style sheet guys what we will do this is not related to style sheet so i will create a file style.css inside the same directory and i will paste the css code guys you can basically purchase the full source code after you will get uh, the CSS code as well so I will not waste the time by writing this CSS code right here so let me copy this and paste it this is a CSS code guys and we are included this code here and after this inside our HTML we have this code let me just copy this and explain to you what is there inside this code this is very simple code guys in HTML code we have this heading which is public chat room in the center position and then we have this chat box which basically contains the unordered list which will contain all the messages and we have the form where we will enter the message and also a input type file will be there we will only be accepting images here allow the user to select images then we have the send button right here so if you reload this application guys we will have this chat room if you refresh let me just refresh this just refresh so it is saying second argument to model must be a pojo string not a schema make sure you're calling mongoose.model sorry let me check guys what is the sorry this needs to be model small m so now you can see that guys this is the chat room here and basically this is the it will not work we need to write the javascript code but still this is this looks great interface guys you will see we have this input field we have the choose file button where you will select images and then we have got the send button so this is the public chat room guys so uh, this is all that you need to do we have used custom css and right here guys after inside right here we will write our javascript code so write inside a separate file so we will say script.js so just inside the public folder just make the script.js file guys and the very first thing we will do we will basically initialize the socket input output and we will create a username variable guys and right here we will show a sweet alert dialog box so where we will be receiving the username so simply copy this and paste the cdn right here of the sweet alert uh, sweet alert as you all know guys the dialog box library if i show you it basically contains some beautiful dialog boxes which we will be using right here in this way you can see that so we have included the CDN and right here uh, we will basically check if the username is available in the local storage. So we will be storing the username guys in the local storage and here we can simply get item. This basically it's a method. We will simply check if the username is already available. In that case we will get the username from the local storage like this and then we will emit a event guys which will be username. We will pass the username so here you can basically in socket.io we have this method which is emit which will actually send the event uh, to the server site and here we need to receive this event so here we can receive this event using on method and here we can receive this like this you can see that so we have this on method guys which will be we will be receiving this event so this needs to be same right here so whatever event that you are receiving username so we are receiving this so we are passing this information the second argument we are passing the username and here we are receiving it this is quite easy in socket.io and in the else block if the username is not present inside local storage then we will show this uh, uh, dialog box guys to the user to enter the username so this will be the swell uh, let me just paste this code right here so basically guys this is enter your username and uh, 
whenever username is entered by the user we are emitting the again like this this code and then we are setting the item in the local storage by using set item to get a, get the item we using sorry this needs to be get item we'll say get item to get it we are using get item and to set we are using set item in the local storage so this username will be stored inside local storage guys for 24 hours i think so now if you refresh your application guys and also we can simply console log username right here so we can say console log the logged in username is and then we can simply print this username so right here guys so basically if you reload what will happen you will see it will basically ask for the username please enter your username let me select the username as john click enter chat nothing will happen but you will see the logged in username is john you will see we are sending this event back to the server side and here we are basically uh, displaying this information the logged in username is john and now we just need to basically show this information on the browser so that the user can see so how we can do this process guys so what we can do it's quite easy basically what we need to write now this uh, inside the server side code guys what we need to do here uh, we need to write inside we need to emit this socket dot emit or basically guys this is a broadcasting event input output if you want to broadcast to every each and every user we use input output dot emit so we need to give it user join this is an event and we will pass the username that's all so this will broadcast to all the users which are connecting to the application and now we need to receive this event so what we can say and here right here i think just outside this we can basically say socket dot on user joined you will have this username and right here guys we need to show a message to the screen that uh, the username is joined so what we can say is that uh, basically we can create a new item we can create a new element document dot create element li list item and basically we can add a dynamic class here which will be chat message so we have defined this class guys in the css guys so we are adding it dynamically and then we will uh, manipulate the inner html of this to we can create a span element and uh, we can dynamically put the username and we can give it a class name so class here will be chat username we have defined these class in the css and we will simply close the span tag and we will simply say has joined the chat like this so this is the html we are doing it and after this we just need to add this to the messages div so you will say messages dot append child item and so we do need to basically uh, right here at the top here we see yeah sorry i think here messages Uh, just wait guys I'm just seeing it okay if you see guys uh, inside our index.html we have provided this ID here to the messages here you will see that so we do need to basically uh, get reference to this element inside our script.js so what we can do is that we can say here we can target document or get element by id messages and then we can append this child as an item you will see that 
so what you will see guys if you refresh john has joined the chat you will see that automatically if you open this in a different window let's suppose uh, if you open a new browser if i change this to 5000 again it will ask the question let's suppose smith now you can see smith has joined the chat smith has joined the chat so you can see all these uh, uh, CSS is applied here uh, username is in red color and then we have a horizontal line below this message you will also see so this is there guys and now after this we j also need to add a scroller bar as well we do need to create a function which will automatically scroll the uh, scroll bar whenever you receive or send a message so for doing this uh, we will be making a function which will automatically scroll to the bottom of the page whenever a new message is received scroll to bottom this is basically the function guys which will automatically scroll the browser this is the function this is the logic here a messages list we are first of all getting the reference of messages and then we will simply just manipulating the scroll top property to the message list scroll height that's all this will automatically scroll to the bottom so after this guys uh, now we do need to do the same process whenever the client is leaving the chat so what we can say here is that so here what we can say uh, whenever the socket is uh, disconnecting let's suppose we have a disconnect event as well so whenever the socket is disconnected guys so what what should happen we need to basically emit a event out there so right here we will input output emit once again this will be broadcasted to all the uh, users which are connecting user left we event we will emit and then we will say socket dot username so here what we will say is that sorry we will emit this event right here guys after user left now we need to receive this event inside our script.js so we will basically copy this code right here paste it this time this will be user left and uh, no information is passed right here we will simply use the username that is present right here you will see that So right here, if you see inside our JavaScript code, we have this event which is user left. So basically guys, what we can do is that uh, inside disconnect, we can say socket and we can pass this information socket dot username. So what we can do, so whenever we are storing this username, we can store this username as a property socket or username is equal to username. So here we are storing the newly joined username to the socket object here as a new property socket or username is equal to the username. And then we can pass this in the disconnect event. So now we can receive this information. So this will be received as data, let's suppose. So what we can say is that data has left the chat like this so rest of the code will remain constant so what should now happen guys if you refresh the application and uh, also let me open a new window so now we have these two windows out there guys and uh, if I basically left you will see null has left the chat uh, let me see guys what is the problem here user left uh, just wait guys I'm just seeing the okay socket dot username so right here let me see uh, inside our uh, disconnect event 
okay sorry here we don't need to provide so just wait with just wait socket dot username and socket dot disconnect yeah here we don't need to provide socket guys because socket is receiving from here in this argument so here we don't need to provide socket here so if you again refresh the application guys so what should happen so just write uh, bolt so you can see bolt has joined the chat and uh, Again, if I say localhost 5000, you can see Smith has joined the chat. And now if I leave, you will see Smith has left the chat. So this message is popping right here, guys. You will see Smith has left the chat. So we are now having these messages, guys. So whenever someone joins, this message will pop in. And whenever someone leaves, this, was, this message will pop in. Now we will be handling the message guys so whenever we enter some kind of message we do need to enter this message in the database and send it right here. So what we can do is right here uh, inside our script.js so we can handle this uh, inside our javascript. So basically we have do done that and after this guys we will simply get all the references uh, let me just paste it so we are get, getting references of all the html elements guys by uh, get element by id query selector like this we have defined all these elements in the index for html so after this guys what should happen we need to basically bind a event handler to the form element add event listener so when the form submits, we just need to say e parameter, and we do need to prevent the auto submission of the form. And then we need to basically select the file which is selected by the user guys by using file reader. And we will select the file input dot files. So we will select the image file which is selected by the user. And here we will simply check guys if the file is not selected by the user, and also if the message is not written by the user in both the cases if this is the case we will simply show an alert message please enter a message and we will simply return so what should it do guys if you just see if you don't write anything and if you don't select the image click on the send button you will see please enter the message this alert box will should happen so after this what should happen if the file is selected by the user if the image file is selected in that case we will read this as a data url base64 code and then we have this on load event we will simply here uh, say socket dot emit we will emit out a event guys which will be chat message and here we will send out the information author will be username currently logged in username and the content will be input dot value which will be null and the image will be reader dot result which will be the base 64 code here so we are sending out this event which is chat message we do need to receive this event inside our server side code right here so and after this guys we do need to reset this value so we will say input dot value will be nothing and the file input value will also be nothing like this and if the file is not selected by the user guys then we will have a else block in that else block we will say socket.emit again we will emit a same event but in this case the author will once again will be the username and content will be this time will input.value and image will be null in this time and once again our we will reset input dot value to be nothing that's all so now we just need to basically listen for this event guys inside our server site which is uh, socket dot on chat message so here we will uh, receive this information 
at the server side so now we need to handle this information guys so right here what we will do is that uh, we will have this message object which will contain three properties so we will say we will construct a message which will be of new message which will be the model that we created which will contain three properties which is the author the content will be message dot content and the image will be message dot image so now we need to save this image inside mongodb database guys so we will say that message dot save and then it returns a promise so we need to write like this we need to chain like this dot then and we need to input out emit we need to say in all the we will say chat message we will say message so this will broadcast to all the clients which are connected guys and if any sort of error take place we have this catch as well so now we need to receive this event guys so chat message at the, the client side so we will simply say here socket dot on chat message so here we will have this message so now we can display this message on the screen guys so now to display this message guys we will use the same code once again which we used earlier on so this will be the same code guys so I will simply copy paste it so here you will see we are having message author here which will be the username and then we have this message dot content this is actual message if this is a chat message or image depending upon whether uh, user has selected the image or entered a chat message and the rest of the steps are pretty much the same guys we are using the same classes which we defined in the CSS code we have making an ally element and if this is an image in that case we are creating a image tag and inside this we are manipulating the image source property and then we are storing message.image and adding this image class which we define in CSS and appending the class and again we are scrolling to the bottom of the page that's all so if you now refresh this application if you send a message inside your chat room click send if you just refresh this application now you can see your message is sent guys if you select an image file so now you can see your image file is also get selected so you can see this is working here and uh, if you open this localhost 5000 one problem is there guys basically if new user connects these messages will not come now we want that all the previous old messages should be coming up whenever a new user is connected so let's suppose if i send out this message this will be you can see it is reflected here also if i select the image file send out so it will be selected in uh, send in all the uh, both the windows i need the previous messages as well so the previous messages which are sent so for doing this guys we do need a event out there inside our server side we just need to write this event so whenever a new client is connected guys inside our socket.io we do need to basically send out an event basically here this will be very simple whenever it is connected we will inside our model we have this find method so we will find all the things and then it will be returned all the messages will be returned right here and we will simply emit all the messages we will like this so load messages and we will display the messages right here so we will emit out this event guys which is load messages so this messages will be stored uh, want to be shown on the client side so now we need to basically wait for this uh, handle this so socket on which is load messages 
so again this will be the same logic guys so here what we will we would use the same logic here pretty much the code is the same guys that's all so if you now refresh basically what should happen here uh let me see guys what is the problem socket dot on inside our index.js we are emitting the messages and uh, let me check our script.js file guys so okay sorry here we do need to write uh, slightly different guys so after we let me just copy paste the code guys here so here we do need to use for each loop guys for loop to iterate over all the messages which are previously sent by the different users so slightly different code code is there uh, we are using a for each loop for each message we are displaying the li tag we are displaying whichever username has sent this message and if message is a image then we are also displaying the image as well like this and then we are appending this to the item and score scrolling it to the bottom page like this so if you now refresh so what should happen all the previous messages will be so if you just refresh so let me uh, what this is a database let me just delete this and start from scratch so if i send some messages guys so now if i open this in a different window localhost 5000 uh let me see guys why it is saying messages for each is not a function okay sorry that is a problem uh, i think i misspelled the yeah so here we do need to write here messages so messages here we are using it so yeah so now guys what will happen if you see if you refresh all the previous messages will be shown here you will see that let me just see uh, side by side if you see guys basically if i close this window smith has left the chat let me send out some images so let's suppose if i open this window in a different window in a different browser so all these messages you will see it will be reflected here also so you can see all the previous messages are also showing here you will see that so now hope uh, the application is almost complete guys so we have uh, used the concept of socket.io to build a group chatting kind of an application where image support is also there so you can also check the live demo guys i have deployed this application on my freemediatools.com website so if you are interested you can basically go to freemediatools.com and uh, we do have this public chat room deployed here you can test out this application so you can select image files like this so the link is given in the description you can check out this application public chat room so if you are interested you can buy the full source code this you can deploy this on your own domain name so it's lovely chatting application that we have developed right here in this live stream 
so the full source code is given in the description of the video hopefully guys you will like this video and uh, if you still have some questions you can ask in the comment section i will definitely reply to those questions and uh, thank you guys for watching this live stream i really appreciate for your time that you given to this live stream and i will be seeing you in the next one